Welcome back to Google Developers Live at I.O. Lewis Gray here from the Moscone Center at San Francisco. I've got Chris Lyon, hardware engineer, on the Chromebook Pixel here with me, as well as Andrew Bowers, uh, director of products. Uh, so I'm really excited to have you guys both on stage. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the Chromebook Pixel has just been one of the best devices I've ever had, just straight out. Uh, Chrome OS has really been something that's really intriguing to me for a long time. Uh, we've really enjoyed having the ability to have all my content in one place, and you can switch from computer to computer, and it follows you. But for the first time ever, this is a device that was completely designed in hardware by Google. So I wanted to talk to you guys about that and talk me through that process in terms of how did that happen and uh, what were we trying to achieve? Yeah, so the, the first thing we were trying to do is really just create the best Chromebook possible. No holds barred. And really thinking about someone who's using a Chromebook all day long as well. So a lot of focus, attention to detail on how the device feels. You know, we really want the hardware to disappear. We want to make it feel like an immersive movie where you forget that you're in a movie theater and you're just really focused on what you're doing. And so part of that's making that hardware disappear so you don't feel the keyboard, the trackpad, things like that. Now, what are the kind of attributes in hardware that you were trying to get to? Like, how did you decide whether it had an 11-inch screen or a 15-inch screen? What were the things where you, you made a decision on that? How did you go about deciding? Mm -hmm. So for those items, uh, when we were setting out in the early design process, we did a large number of user studies on various screen sizes, various configurations, keyboard placement, et cetera. And a lot of those various parameters all fit together to give us the proper shape of the laptop. One of the early goals was we definitely wanted an absolutely uh, full metal enclosure. Feels very nice to hold, really solid design. Uh, but that comes with a lot of additional challenges as to how you fit all of the other components together inside the system. Okay. And so, you know, when I look at this, you know, having tried the previous Chromebook models mm -hmm. that were plastic, they come out, they were very light. Uh, this one has a stronger feel, it's kind of more industrial. And uh, one of the things that's happened as a result of making, I guess, like the ultimate Chromebook is it's a little bit more expensive uh, than the original Chromebooks. You know, some of them we've been looking at Samsung. I've got three of those at my house, like uh, got one for my wife, got one for myself, got two for my parents, and they're all 249 And obviously the Pixel is a different beast. You know, it's starting at, I think, 1249 uh, and you basically got a little bit more expensive. So what was the thought behind that? Was that something where we wanted to set it up kind of as a reference model, or do we expect these to be for the mass market? So. Pixel should be thought of as a halo device, something where we really want to showcase the uh, large number of new technologies that aren't necessarily in the other Chromebooks yet, but things that we want developers to experiment with, uh, things like the high pixel density touch screen, yeah. uh, things like keyboard backlight. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's a microphone array in here. There's yes. two up top for uh, beam forming. There's noise cancellation. Uh, there's uh, the LTE. This is the first Chromebook with that. And again, these are a number of features where the hardware has to lead the software a bit. You know, we have to get the features out there, build a critical mass of users, and then encourage the developers to target those features. Now, you mentioned the high screen density. You know, one thing about the Pixel is that you shouldn't have to ever see a Pixel. I mean, that's part of what we've been talking about. You say Chrome, you want to get the Chrome out of the way of the browser, and really have the user be directly interfacing with their data, with their content. I'm glad you mentioned LTE. I'm actually on LTE right now. Uh, the Wi-Fi at the, at the conference has been really exceptional. You know, it goes up, it goes down, there's a lot of people fighting for attention, and I've really cut through all of that by getting on LTE, and having it on this type of a device has really been exceptional. And so when I look at the Pixel specifically, there's really those three things that have set it apart. You know, the inclusion of the LTE, the high-density Pixel screen, and the touch aspect of it. Now, touch is something you traditionally accept with like a tablet or a mobile phone. What was the thought process behind having a touch screen? And how are we seeing users behave with a touch screen or possibly developers coding for it? Yeah, I think, well, so I think that you hit on it right there, which is touch screens are becoming pervasive in our lives. So they're on your phone, they're on tablets, they're even on uh, ATMs and the gas station pump. And so if you look at children interacting with a laptop, uh, they've probably used their parent's phone or their tablet, and so they're touching the screen already. And so it's just in a very intuitive way versus a indirect on a trackpad or a mouse. And so we're seeing it become more and more pervasive. And we think of it as yet another way to interact with the computer. It's not the only way you interact with the laptop, but it's another way. So to give you an example, on Tuesday I spent five hours on a plane, a cramped seat, 
But I could pull my pixel like this, and I could scroll and archive email uh, on the plane uh, much the more The viewers at home can't see your hands. <laughs> so, so that's a good point. So, you know, a lot of times you'll find you'll use something in a different way. Like, for instance, when you're cramped in on a plane, you know, using like this rather than having to use the trackpad. Right. So it's, you know, it opens up new opportunities. Right, absolutely. And I've seen that a lot. There's one really cool thing that, you know, you hit the right screen, screen combination. You can rotate the entire screen like 90 degrees or 180 degrees to be fixed. And literally, you can look at the Chromebook right side up, even if it's on its side, which is kind of entertaining. And so for a lot of people who have like a vertical monitor, I can see them possibly extending out and having that vertical monitor. And the, the processor in here is strong enough that it can push all those pixels, even in that new configuration. So I want to talk a little bit about the speed. You know, this is obviously faster. Uh, it's faster, it's brighter, it's got a lot of attributes to it. So what about the speed? How did that come so into play? We designed the Pixel to be Chrome fast. Mm -hmm. The idea here was hardware should not get in the way of the experience. We wanted this to be able to show off the browser and the operating system as well as possible. Uh, this is an Intel i5 CPU in here. Uh, there's four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, pretty standard other features internally aside from that, but it's more than enough for web applications, for HTML5 games, and it should actually enable a significant amount of future development coming there. One of the things we're really excited about is HTML5 games are becoming more and more popular, and actually we're seeing developers make use of the touch screen of the high PPI display. And we're really hoping that as we can build more of a critical mass of systems out there with those features, that right. people will be implementing more and more higher end applications. So we really wanted to make sure that it had the horsepower under the hood there to be able to handle that. And, and I think just, yeah, just to add to that real quick, I think one of the ways we also think about it is not, we don't want consumers to have to think about what processor do they have in the machine. We just want it to be, is it fast enough for what I want it to do? Sure. And so we want to get to that, that world too. And one of the things that I've experienced having the touch screen on the laptop is you could have more of an immersive experience, be it with maps or with photos. There's something really breathtaking about diving into Google Maps or the Google Plus Photos experience and just being able to pinch to zoom and getting right into what you want and you just swipe to the side and have it go away. And it's something that's really become natural. I, I, it's one of those funny things about having a glossy screen that you touch all the time. I was in the car the other day making a quick web change. I was on LTE, and I saw my fingerprints all over the screen. How do you guys handle like just managing that type of thing, where you get a little bit dirty and you clean it off? So what do you think about that type it's of stuff? It's a cloth. So, so you got a lot. <laughs> uh, it is actually a big engineering challenge, and it is something that we, we put a fair amount of work into it with Pixel. Uh, obviously, there's still a long ways to go in that direction, and it's something we're continuing to research. Yeah, it's one of those fun things, and you, you don't realize how often you touch it until you get the little bit of glare, and you're like, wow, I can touch this thing all the time. You know, you got the, the hands on there. Uh, one of the nice things, though, the screen is, uh, is uh, Gorilla Glass coating, so yeah. it's, it's very resilient. So at least, even if you are smudging it, you don't have to worry about damaging but it. What I find is I often am reaching to other people's computers and expecting that I can impact the touch screen. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Why are you using that product? You know, Actually, that's, should that's been an interesting uh, problem in the office. So when we were using these uh, initially internally a lot, people got in the habit of, when they had written an email, then just pushing the uh, send or the compose button on there. Uh -huh. And you'd see people walking around uh, when this was still secret and we couldn't uh, have it in every meeting. And they'd have their ThinkPad out and they'd push the screen and they'd get mad. And, and nothing would happen. Definitely a number of our uh, vendors and partners uh, right. probably caught on to that. Yeah, we have like five minutes left. So I want to talk a little about Chrome OS. Uh, you know, Chrome OS is still a little bit new for a lot of people, and it's really kind of growing in maturity in terms of the capability. You know, every time Chrome gets better, Chrome OS gets better. And you know, about two years ago, maybe it was even three at this point, with the CR48 model coming out, uh, really kind of the first uh, reference point having a Chrome device out there. It wasn't super fast. There were some aspects of the hardware which were not perfect, but it was a fun reference point. And since then, we've continued to see iterations from Chrome, uh, be it devices from Samsung, Lenovo, HP, Acer, uh, I hope I mentioned them all. Uh, and you've seen people come out with different price points and different sizes. Uh, what has been your kind of response to see how Chrome OS is evolving? And you know, what is left? You know, what is the kind of last things that the Chrome OS should be doing where people can really safely leave more traditional operating systems? Well, I think, I think um, so the Samsung Chromebook has been the number one laptop on Amazon for about 190 days since yes. its launch consecutively. And so I think that speaks for itself in terms of uh, what people are ready for. Uh, with the Pixel, we've taken it a step further as well in terms of there are a lot of people that wanted high-end hardware, precision hardware. They spend 10 hours a day on a Chromebook. And so 
you know, it's not just when we say for everyone, we don't just mean people that uh, want uh, a very affordable laptop, but also a precision experience with a great keyboard and trackpad and touchscreen. And so with the Pixel, we're bringing that as well. So you cover different needs out there for different people. Sure. And I think you're, you're mentioning that you say for everyone, but it's also for everything. Uh, you know, as someone who's very Google Drive centric, uh, with all of my files and my applications there, going to Gmail, going to my Google Plus, I really believe at this point, every computer is my computer. You know, as long as I can get to my Google content, it's all there. But actually, I'd much rather be using a Pixel. You know, if you handed me a ThinkPad, I'd be fine. I'd be able to boot up Chrome and do all my work. But with the Pixel, it just has such kind of like a professional, high quality experience. You don't want to suffer the screen display of something else which isn't as strong. Uh, and even just the little bits with like the keys and the hardware and the trackpad are so professionally designed. Uh, and so I think you can really see that for those people who do get an opportunity to get their hands on it, uh, to check that out. Uh, so for the many people who are watching on the live stream, how do they get their hands on a Pixel? So they can go to the Google Play Store online or bestbuy.com uh, as well. And Best Buy has them in display. I remember that's actually where I bought the three right. Samsung Chromebooks that I got. I almost cleaned them out. And I think I sold five other ones like in the 10 minutes I was there just playing demo. Uh, and so I think it's great that uh, you have the Pixels out there getting really big distribution. Uh, anything else that the viewers should know about the Pixel before we cut? Um, I think that uh, you really have to experience it to, to understand what it, what it is and what it means. And I think it brings Chromebooks to a whole other level of user that want to use Chromebooks. And so we hope that it'll open up a lot of opportunities for people to experience Chromebooks and how easy they are to use and how great it is to live with them. Yeah, well, thank you very much, uh, both for you joining me on stage and for all the work that you did putting into this product. Uh, it's obviously something I use every single day, uh, not just at the conference. And I constantly run into my kids saying, hey, Daddy, look at that. And they'll click on my touch screen and like accidentally click on an ad or something. But they understand exactly how to interface with the touch screen because they've been growing up with tablets. And we're seeing really the next generation of personal computing happen right in front of us. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, so for all of you watching on this live stream, uh, appreciate your joining us. We're going to kick you back to the sessions. I believe up next we have an event with Android. Uh, you won't want to miss Rito Meyer talking with Hugo Barra and Hiroshi Lockheimer.